What's up? My name is Matt Workman, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, editing motion capture and doing a little bit of animation for cinematics with metahumans inside of Unreal Engine 5.6. Uh, this entire cinematic was created with three animations from NarrativeMotion.com. This one is called uh, Narrative Motion 12 Sit Edge Look A. I did a couple different takes, B and C, but A was the best, and that's the one that I ended up publishing. So if you want to try to recreate this uh, cinematic, head over to narrativemotion.com and you can pick up these animations. We have a couple free ones uh, and these ones are all paid. So I want to talk about uh, fixing some things with animation, right? And so the first thing we're going to look at here is that the hand is clipping with the body. This is going to happen uh, no matter what with retargeting because different characters have different length arms, torsos, legs, and Basically, those same rotations, when you put them on different bodies, they're going to equal uh, the end result of the hand being in different places. So for, for my body, this worked out fine. And for the mannequin, I think it was okay. But for her body, it's not going so well. So we want to just fix that really quickly. So the main technique here is, again, we have our narrative motion animation uh, just playing here. What we want to do is go to body, control rig. We want layered. You got to click that on usually. And we want the metahuman control rig. And there's two in 5.6, and I'll just take the uh, first one here. So right now, nothing has changed other than we have a control rig. But the control rig is basically sitting right on top of the animation. We haven't made any changes just yet. So I've adjusted the UI to be a little bit bigger. And what we want to do is, in our layered control rig, uh, is go here and make this a little bit more readable. We want to go down to the IK switches for the arms and turn them both on. They will drop keyframes in there. That's great. Um, we're not going to be getting into curves and like actual animation here. We're going to just keep this like really high level and use these kind of high level sequencer keyframes, kind of like After Effects style. So now we have um, IK hands, right? So I'll show you how that works. Uh, what we're able to do is um, move the hand, but have it not really. Um, kind of break everything else. Everything else will kind of stay in place, just the hand will move. So the, the big picture mechanic that we're gonna go for here is uh, make sure that we're in global space here. All we have to do is grab this and move it, right? And um, now that hand is basically not going through the body. But what we've done is we've actually in X offset that hand animation for the entire clip. And that's not what we wanna do. So I'm going to undo this, um, and let's see what's going on here. Do we still have IK hands? We don't. Okay, so I think I've undone undone the IK um, here. No, they're still on. Uh, what is going on here? Uh, let's delete this, and we've kind of lost IK hands for a second. Do this leg, arm. Turn those back on, and I'm just gonna drop a keyframe on global. There we go, okay, so they're back now. And the hand is still in the body, okay. So what we wanna do is basically blend between uh, the original animation and the correction, uh, depending on what's happening. Now there's other ways of doing this with like the global weight of this layered control rig, but I'm just gonna do it kind of like, hmm, a little bit more manually. So we're gonna focus on the left hand. The right hand is not really in shot most of the times. 
um, because it's not phasing us. And um, so we're really going to only correct the uh, the hand in a couple places. And I'll show you my, my general approach for this. So I don't know where these key keyframes, these keyframes came from. I'm going to go through and just make sure all those are gone. Uh, the only keyframe we should have on this is on this control here, which we don't have any yet. So let's actually go do things now. So let's see. So let's zoom in. What I'm going to do is put keyframes where I want to blend back to the original mocap position. So right around here, keyframe, right? So that's basically going to be the same. I'm going to delete this one. Um, and then it's going to hit the ground and we're going to do a correction. But then right about here, we're actually in kind of like an okay place and uh, it's out of frame at this point. So here, I'm gonna blend back in. Uh, and then let's keep going through the animation here. I kind of zoom in so you don't see the hand or I'm moving in. And then here, uh, what happens is that you'll see that her hands are through her waist, I'm sorry, her, uh, her legs. That is always gonna happen retargeting, especially if they're wearing bigger clothes. Um, it's a consistent issue. So right here, her hands are kind of just free. It doesn't matter, right? It's all good. But then right there, that's where we're blending in. So we're going to go from here. This is keeping the original. We will blend in. And then her hands uh, go here. So during this transition, I'd say maybe about there, we're going to do another corrective. So we're going to do right about there. And then we're going to blend. We're going to bring her hand down a bit. And then I'd say about there, we'll kind of blend back in. So there's other ways of doing this, but this is sort of my preferred way. So at this point, we're at our regular animation and by there, we'll be back to our regular animation. But in between, what I'd like to do is find where the offensive part is. So that's about here, right? So I know that if I offset in X and then come down in Z here, we could correct the thumb, but I'm just gonna have it be a little bit lower and a little bit further out. Um, and if we do it now, we'll see how bad it is. It's going to basically be sliding. It's not the worst, not the worst at all. But what I'm going to do is I want this corrective to happen faster. So I'm going to copy and paste it here and I'm going to paste it there. And then we could delete that one basically in the middle. So we're blending from the original animation to the corrected spot lands. Um, it does feel a little bit slidey. Um, but we could go hop in the curves and like actually start animating this. But for now, let's just stay high level. We've done the correction and now we've blended back to the original mocap, which uh, I think is fine, right? So there's our corrective change there. And we'll do the last kind of two small ones here. You could do this to every aspect of the body. We could then redirect to which, which way she's looking, correct posture, correct shoulders. There's a lot that could happen. So here again, right about there, I'm gonna zoom in. Um, we're in this motion of, I'm about to touch my legs and there it is here. So we're going to go to like kind of the final rest here and we just want to go straight up in Z like this. Uh, let's see how that blend looked. Not bad, right? So now it's actually on top and right now it's going to be just slowly keyframing back to normal. Uh, so it ends up back in the leg. Uh, we want to kind of do it like right before this action, I would say here. So it should stay above the whole time. And then right here, we're blending back to the original. And when she lands there, the hand is again, not in the right place. So we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. Try not to hyperextend. We're not gonna correct the fingers. We'll copy our, oops, we're gonna copy our, um, our fix, so to speak. And so it's not sliding maybe around here while there's all this motion, we're gonna copy this frame there again, right? So. We've corrected so that the hand's kind of touching the ground. It's a little floaty, a little extendy. Um, but overall, I think that's a, a much better motion. So let's look. Uh, I'm going to hit home, which didn't work. Oh, there it goes, home. And uh, just kind of collapse everything. And let's look at it with our corrective animation added in. Oh, it's a hyperextend on the arm. We're going to try to fix that. Finger kind of goes through the ground, but at least the hand's not in the, the waist. That sort of stuff is a much bigger issue. Uh, I'll zoom through this part and we're gonna go fix that. And right about here, she's like, okay, I'm gonna get some work done today. The left hand is sitting on top of the leg. The right hand's not, it's, it's still through it, but you just can't see it. 
and then uh, we hyperextended the arm again. So that's that's sort of the issue we're running up against is hyperextending to get the hand on there. So what, what I'm going to do for now is just kind of cheese it and have the hand not actually be um, touching the ground. Um, but we would have to adjust like the, po the posture even more, like the hips or something, to get her arm on the ground and have it not hyperextend. So here... Um, we're being a little aggressive with it. So right there, we have a hyperextend, hyperextended somewhere. There's, bam, too much, too much, right? As it's on its way. So we're going to have this happen um, later and see if that can smooth this out, right? So it's pulling. That almost feels like a hyperextend. I think it's okay, though. Right, so the arm didn't hit, like, full extension. It did there. It's a bit of a pop, but I don't think it's that bad. Uh, anyway, you keep finessing it, but I want to get rid of that hyperextension. And then where's this one? It's when she's getting up, right? Because it's like her arm is just not that long. Um, there, it locks out. Looks a little awkward. I mean, you, you could just have your arm locked out while you're standing up. It's not that bad. I think that one, I'll just leave it, right? She's just, she hyperextends it, locks it. It's a, it calls attention to itself just a little bit. But it, it at least makes sense that you 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 are completely hyperextending it to push your weight on it. So I think it's okay. Um, if we wanted to, we could just kind of bring it up a tiny bit, and it wouldn't be fully locked out. But uh, I think it's okay. So let's just watch the intro part again. Home, hopefully going to work. There we go. Um, let me collapse everything, and we'll look. So the hyperextension's gone. Um, the finger kind of went through the ground, but at least her hand's not in uh, her actual leg. So now let's look at how to add some facial animation to this clip uh, without using motion capture, just keyframing it the old way. So I'm looking at, what is this? This is shot uh, three for me. And the animation we're using from narrative motion is number 11, walk, stop, uh, look, spin, walk. That's how I'm naming, naming things for now. Uh, I'm sure that will evolve. But uh, this animation, she just walks in, stops, looks around. You know, it's very, I don't know. To me, it felt like really cinematic. And, and the way I film it, she does kind of like a blackout with the, with the camera, which we'll show. But right now, if you look at it, she doesn't have any facial expressions. So it's sort of hard to read like what's going on. Um, now, I, I believe there is a face board somewhere. It as a 2D picker, but I wasn't able to find it right now, unfortunately. So I'm going to be doing this sort of uh, a, a kind of painful back and forth way. But because this is the intro of the film, um, I want this to be uh, a little bit happier. Uh, we haven't discovered that there's something wrong just yet. So we're, we're going to basically have her smile. And I'm sure there's a much better way of doing this, but we're going to do it with the picker here. So I'm going to grab uh, both... Uh, of these. So I'm going to open up the face board down here and it'll tell me which one I'm grabbing. So I'm going to go with this is cheek raise and cheek raise. And we want to make sure that we're using um, local space here. So then I'm going to spin around and I'm actually not, I'm not even going to put keyframes on this. It's just going to hold it. So when we do this, it's sort of like smizing uh, with her eyes uh, just a little bit there. Um, I'll just do a little bit so that that's the cheek all the way. Um, and it does, it does a lot of things kind of all at once, but we're, we're going to do that. And then the next one I'm going to target is, um, blink just a little bit. So both blinks, we'll grab those, spin back around. I know, I'm sure there's a picker over here somewhere. I just couldn't find it. So I'm just going to blink just a little tiny bit, right? This is completely closed. Uh, I'm not going to be animating blinks for this or doing mocap. Just kind of keep it, keep it really simple. So just a little bit there, and then there should be eye squint as well. Um, so we're just trying to have like happy eyes so far, if that makes sense. Is this squint, uh, squint inner? Yeah, just a tiny bit of this, right? So we're we're just trying to go for like a a generally like you know just a little bit happy. So the eyes are kind of squinted, and they're also just. Uh, the cheek raise is sort of like moving towards like being happy. So let's grab a uh, sharp corner pull and corner pull. Uh, we'll do corner pulls. These are just like generally like kind of like the mouth smiling. So we'll just bring this up just a little bit. Uh, we're not going to go like the full happy, 
but just just a little bit here so now she has like some sort of expression um not a ton and i'll save this and now um you'll see when we go to animate or when we look through the camera here um i think when we hit play it's going to stop this shot is just stationary that we, when we walk into this close-up which we kind of cut in here um she's just like barely smiling and her eyes aren't like fully neutral uh, you can see that I'm using my physics earrings, which are available on uh, Fab, and they add a lot of cool secondary animation. And what's nice about the way that we did the physics, I'll hit G here. You'll see what uh, what's nice about the physics is that they're actually playing while you're just scrubbing in the timeline because they're using uh, the new control rig physics node. So that's a cool way to get a preview of it, and you can kind of just tell that they're working in general uh, when you're scrubbing like this. So that's adding facial animation and also just a, a nice little showcase for my physics earrings again, available on Fab. Cool, so that wraps it up for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed this cinematic and look at uh, editing motion capture. If you're interested in using this exact motion capture from this little film here, again, this is all available on narrativemotion.com. This is Narrative Motion 11, walk, stop, look, spin, walk. We kind of looked at this one uh, for the close-up of the shot here. But I'm building out a sort of generic narrative cinematic library of motion capture that I'm using for my work. And I'm actually working with other companies who have been looking for motion capture. And the solution I've come up with is to make the recording sessions as affordable as possible, free sometimes, is that the deal is that I'm basically going to put that animation on my platform and sell that to everyone. Because while I think for a lot of speaking performance capture scenes, you really do need bespoke custom animation for everything. I think that we could build a library that like the general community can use that will work generically for a lot of scenes. And again, you can use additive control rigs or layered control rigs and make it your own if you want to. Uh, and as you retarget this animation to a different skeleton, add tweaks to it, it really does become your animation at that point. But there's no saying that we can't just all use the exact same base library of animation for cinematics. And that's what I'm trying to build. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.